My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I'm here with the latest from the tech world as well as a few extra bits from the gaming world as well but it is going to be a primarily technology focused video for you today. So what's on the itinerary I hear you ask? Well we're going to have a leak of an Intel Canonic based NUC with a discrete Radeon GPU inside. Then we're going to take another trip to Intelville with the Intel Stratix 10. Then we're going to move over to Camp AMD as they have hinted at the Ryzen 7 2800X potentially being a thing. And then we're going to move on to some console news with the Xbox One as it's going to be getting a high refresh rate option in May. And then we're going to end things out with some more comments from the Netherlands on loot box legislation. But as I said, we're going to start things out with Intel and Canon Lake. So, this particular rumour is thanks to Win Future, who found a few images that allegedly show a unannounced Crimson Canyon NUC, and the outside of the box looks pretty similar if you've seen any of the previous NUC devices, but the key changes are of course what's actually inside, because the new model is expected to contain an Intel Core i3-8120U dual core Canon Lake U processor, alongside of course AMD Radeon 500 series graphics, with GDDR5 memory. Now of course you may have seen the recent launch of the Hades Canyon NUC which obviously had KB Lake alongside an AMD GPU but in that case the GPU and the CPU are just kind of, they're on they exist in the same space basically but if the report is accurate the Crimson Canyon could be the first NUC with the GPU on a separate chip which is pretty impressive given the thing's size. Now interestingly as well, Intel is expected to offer at least two Crimson Canyon NUC devices with some you know, model numbers I'm not going to repeat because it's just you know, a word salad of letters and numbers, it doesn't really matter. Both are already listed at some online sites but they don't show pictures or anything like that so you know, not particularly useful. Now we don't know of course if every Crimson Canyon is going to have AMD graphics, it could be there's the two models, that's what the difference is, one has AMD, one doesn't, but it does seem all of them are going to be powered by 10nm Canon Lake. So of course watch this space for any updates, as of course these reports could be incorrect, it could obviously be fake, but it's looking like it is a thing, we just don't know for sure if the specs are correct and all that sort of stuff. But, as I said, let's move on to the Intel Stratix 10. Now this report actually comes to us from Intel themselves who put up a newsroom post just a couple of days ago, basically just blowing the horn of the Intel Stratix 10 basically, claiming that it can perform 10 trillion calculations per second. And just to kind of put this in some sort of context because that number is kind of nebulous, it's like okay but how do you actually put that into real world terms? And the best way to say it I guess would be it's 10 to 100 times faster than the chips in consumer devices. These Stratix FPGAs are capable of 10 T-flops, or as I say, 10 trillion floating point operations per second. And according to Intel, once more, they can process the data equivalent to 420. I'm a day late for that one. I was about to make a joke, but I looked at the date and I was like, no, I'm sad. But they can process the data equivalent to 420 Blu-ray discs in just a second. So yeah, this thing is fast. So you might wonder if you haven't heard of them, or perhaps you've forgotten, because it's not like every day they're mentioned, FPGAs are basically a special class of chip that are used in stuff like speech recognition, AI, search engine, and obviously high performance computing. And they're also highly customizable, and they can be remote, reprogrammed remotely and on the fly. So they're very, very flexible and are used for numerous things, and obviously this high-end calculations are not going to be for you or I but it still shows the obscene potential of what's going on there. So as I say we're going to move on to AMD next. And obviously we've been talking a lot about the 2000 series lineup but of course it officially launched and there was a video done just the other day if you haven't already seen it by Paul on the reviews and all that sort of stuff on the 2700X and whether or not you should buy it basically. I'll link it in the description below this video if you haven't already seen it. But basically what we have here is that the Senior President and General Manager of the Computing and Graphics Business Group, who is a fellow by the name of Jim Anderson, has reportedly hinted at the potential release of the 2800X, which of course has been weirdly missing from the lineup. 
Now, according to these reports, this chip would release later on in this year to basically be counter to whatever the 8-core Coffee Lake CPUs bring to the table. So this was just a hint, a reported hint by Jim Anderson, so this is far from officially confirmed and all we can really talk about is speculation and obviously whether or not this would actually happen. Now the 2800X could theoret theoretically excuse me, come out, but since the 2700X is reaching the clock speed of 4.35 GHz, basically the 2800X would most likely be a clock speed bump, but not a huge one. But I think it would depend heavily on the yields of premium quality silicon, because that's what AMD would most likely want to use for the 2800X, excuse me. They probably can't physically increase the core count due to space on the die and the actual platform itself. There are other tweaks they could make, for example, like increasing the TDP to improve the overclocking, overclocking capabilities. But if the 2800X exists, or is going to exist, which you know is not outside the realms of possibility or anything, we are most likely just going to see an increase in clock speed just because of what I just said. So let's wait and see. It would make sense, of course, for AMD to have something to answer what Intel have coming out this summer. So I wouldn't be shocked to see this, but I would think that they would want to bring more to the table than what they would be able to do based on what we know, or what we speculate, I should say, about what Intel's up to. But again, this has all been pure speculation. It could just not be a thing, and they would place in their confidence in the current Ryzen 2000 series lineup, or they've got something else cooking entirely. Anyway, let's move on to the Xbox One. So this isn't actually official announcement, so no rumours or nebulous nature of this news here, as Microsoft has officially announced that high refresh rate will be another first for consoles on the Xbox One, and it's going to be coming out in May. So for those of you who have a 120Hz monitor capability, you will be able to select that option. Now obviously that doesn't all of a sudden mean that all the games that are available are going to be able to support this. There's probably not going to be any games for this when it comes out in May. But it basically gives developers that option. And Microsoft did say, to be fair, that how they wanted to do the Xbox One X is to give developers choice. Like you can, They can use the extra horsepower to push 4K, or they can do frame rate, or they can obviously do both with multiple modes, which is obviously becoming more and more popular, and I'm very, very glad to see that. And this is continuing that trend, and obviously they've, they've done this sort of thing in the past as well outside of that with a variable refresh rate so it's basically giving developers the option to support 128 hertz, 120 hertz excuse me so yeah nothing you know world ending or game changing but a, a cool addition to the xbox one i must say anyway so let's finish off this video with the netherlands so the Netherlands Gaming Authority has said that they want to, quote, work together and act together with other European nations to tackle the rather thorny issue of loot boxes. Now, obviously, this follows fairly swiftly on the heels of the ruling from the Netherlands Gaming Authority that basically found some games outside of their gambling laws and basically said, you know, fix up or we're going to remove your games from sale, essentially. Now, there was a interview conducted between the NGA and GamesIndustry.biz. I will of course include a link to this article in the description below this video. I'm not going to go through all, the whole interview but I just want to discuss the core of what they're saying here. And essentially what was asked was whether or not the NGA would like to see the similar acts put in place by the Dutch Games Association on an EU-wide basis. And he said, quote, the possibility is there. As far as I can tell, there are certain authorities such as Belgium that are doing their own studies right now. I know they're harder than us in the whole topic. They might have different findings, but this ruling could certainly influence rulings that are due to come out. I do know that they are really pushing to the EU and trying to get in touch with all the different authorities in EU member states to get one blanket precedent so that the whole EU has the same ruling. Now, obviously, one of the things that I discussed when I originally touched on this topic the other day was the repercussions that this could have. It has set a precedent, and once that precedent has been set, it just has a ripple effect on the industry. And we could see a potential EU-wide legislation on this. Or we might just see it only happen in a few places. Obviously, there's, there's numerous ways that this can go, but... The butterfly has flapped its wings, as it were, and now we have to see what effect this is going to have. Now, unfortunately, they didn't reveal what the games were that were out that were found in breach of the law. They didn't name them. 
they said that if they don't make the changes, they'll name them. But at the moment, they are not offering any comments on which games they found to be in breach of their law. But another point that I want to bring up from the interview is that the NGA is trying to push the industry to kind of bring itself in line with the law so that, you know, courts and all this other stuff doesn't have to get involved and basically force their hand, which obviously could be quite messy, could result in things that we don't like, that sort of thing. And while this is speculation, that would kind of make sense because it was basically like, hey, fix up or we will take action kind of thing. And now they're hoping, of course, that well, this will have effects on the industry as a whole. So, yeah, one last thing that I want to pull from the interview is obviously... What they found as issue was with these loot boxes was the fact that the items inside could actually be sold for monetary value and the reason that there weren't more games found is because, well, most games that have loot boxes do not have a way for you to sell what you get out of it. I can't sell my Bastion skin, just for example. But they did also criticise loot boxes and how they kind of hit the same part of your brain of the, you know, the gambling addiction part of your brain. It does still hit that. Your brain doesn't really know the difference between a digital thing and putting a pound in the in the uh, fruit machine and getting five pounds back or whatever and they did have a quote on this that i feel is definitely worth bringing up they said quote the netherlands gaming authority therefore calls on providers of this type of loot box to remove the addiction sensitive elements almost winning effects visual effects ability to keep opening loot boxes quickly after the other and such like from the games and to implement measures to exclude vulnerable groups or to demonstrate that the loot boxes on offer are harmless so yeah they don't while they're only calling out these four games, they're not exactly best pleased with how loot boxes are being presented at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see, of course, to see what the repercussions are, but it's definitely going to be worth keeping an eye on for sure. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Your support is always appreciated. So thanks. I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend.